Your running mate has said more than once, the vice president, that she is for mandatory gun buyback. She also said at one point in the past, even if you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home, that doesn't mean that we're not going to walk in and check on things. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylan. Now we all know that the left absolutely hates, well, our freedoms in America. In particular, they absolutely hate the freedom of speech and our right to bear arms. We also know that Jon Stewart is one of the biggest shills in the industry. In this video, I want to show you the tricks that the left like to use to strip Americans of their freedoms. I'm going to show you this video where Jon Stewart goes on this insane rant. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but again, that's the logic of the left. It doesn't have to make sense, you just have to fall for it. And then I'm going to show you how Kami Law and Timmy Awall believe exactly as Jon Stewart does. Hey, would you consider hitting the thumbs up button? You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. Now let's watch as this leftist has an absolute meltdown over the fact that you have constitutional freedoms as Americans. But at least the Constitution remains intact and is there to ensure that we have the First Amendment. The Second Amendment is there to ensure that we have the First Amendment. (laughs) Guns don't protect our free speech. Our free speech is protected by the consent of the governed laid out through the Constitution. It's it's not based on the threat of violence. Okay, hold on. I got to stop it real quick. I want you to see how cunning uh, the left tries to be. What Jon Stewart is saying here is that having the right to bear arms, having the Second Amendment inherently is a threat to violence. It's not about protecting or guarding or shielding, none of that. It's an automatic threat to violence to keep and bear arms. They try to twist it and make it sound like a negative. Why is exercising your second amendment an automatic threat of violence? It's not a threat of violence. It's a promise of protection. It's based on elections, organizing referendums, a judicial system. Our social contract offers many, many avenues to remedy these issues and allows sides to be heard and adjudicated. Guns, from what I can tell, seem to mostly protect the speech of the people holding the gun. It's a tool of intimidation. And if I may finish, listen, motherfuckers, I'm not done. Okay, so what you're so brilliantly watching here is Jon Stewart make the argument that the Second Amendment does not protect the First Amendment. The government protects the First Amendment. And then goes on to say that guns seem to only protect the speech of the ones holding the guns. So which is it, Johnny boy? And of course, you hear him saying all the buzzwords. Like I said earlier, he, he called them a threat of violence and tools of intimidation. Gee... Why would the crazed leftists who hate and want to destroy everybody that doesn't think and act and speak like they do want to ban the Second Amendment? Hmm. It is a tool of intimidation and one that I think is actually being irresponsibly and recklessly invoked. Because some people in your crowd thought they might have been shadow banned by Facebook. You got to love how he says, because some people on your side think they might have been shadow banned. You mean kind of like when Mark Zuckerberg came out with this letter just a couple of months ago, explicitly confessing that in 2021, senior officials of the Biden administration, including the White House, including Kami Law, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain co-fraud content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. It goes on to talk, I mean, this is what censoring means. If you say something the government doesn't like, and they censor you, they don't allow you to speak. They suppress your First Amendment 
Right. Again, even with all the evidence, even with Mark Zuckerberg blatantly admitting this, you still have the crazed leftists that make it sound like it's a boogeyman, like it never actually happened. It's all made up. You guys are in Butler, Pennsylvania. The whole reason you're there is because some f***ing asshole with an AR-15 tried to permanently litigate his vision of this country's free speech. That's why you're there. The whole point of a society is guns don't decide it. I would prefer at this moment not to trade in a government that offers me many remedies for my concerns, legitimate or illegitimate, for a situation where my rights are determined by how many militia members agree with me. Then go back to England, Stuart. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, it, it explicitly protects all other freedoms that we have as Americans. Take all guns away from Americans and the American military. Bye-bye, free speech. Bye-bye, America. Why? Because you just took the shield away from America. With all these leftists, they literally argue against the freedoms of the country that offers them the freedom to argue against their freedoms. Again, you're seeing him say that he would rather have the government decide everything for him, whether it's good or bad, than to have the ability to protect himself from a tyrannical government that wants to do harm on him, that wants to take away their his constitutional freedoms. Make no mistake, the Second Amendment is clear. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. People trying to argue against the right of citizens having the right to bear arms because it says a well-regulated militia. And as recent as 2008, you saw that the Supreme Court made it absolutely clear without a shadow of a doubt that the Second Amendment was not just based solely on an organized militia, but also covers the individual's right to keep and bear arms. And what else does it say here? It says being necessary to the security of a free state. What's included in a free state? Well, our First Amendment, our ability to speak freely. And it literally goes on to say that it is the right of the people to keep and bear arms and that it shall not be infringed. A part of this right to keep and bear arms is to protect our freedoms in America. I want to show you some clips of Kami Law, Harry, and uh, Timmy Awal here, who could potentially be the next president and vice president. I want to show you what they think about your right to keep and bear arms. Look at this unearthed clip from many years ago of Kami Law. Watch what she thinks about your rights. Responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community and just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not gonna walk into that home and check to see if you're being responsible and safe in the way you conduct your affairs. This is the government saying, just because you are legally exercising your right to keep and bear arms, doesn't mean that the government won't come into your house unannounced, without your permission, to make sure that you know who's in charge. AWOL was actually asked on Fox News what he thought about commie law having said that before. Your running mate has said more than once, the vice president, that she is for mandatory gun buyback. She also said at one point in the past, even if you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home, that doesn't mean that we're not going to walk in and check on things. Now, you both say you're gun owners. So are you OK with that? Someone at some point saying you have to give one of your guns back, all of your guns back and or somebody doing a warrantless search in your home of guns that you legally own. Yeah, no one's talking about that. And I was with my guns yesterday out pheasant hunting with we my friends, you. many of them conservatives. Spoiler alert. He doesn't answer the question, except he did say one interesting little thing there is that nobody's talking about this. Kamila has well been talking about this for years and years. In fact, here's just one instance where she talked about this. Do you believe in the mandatory buyback of quote unquote assault weapons and whether or not you do how does that idea not go against fundamentally the Second Amendment? 
Yeah. So, um, great question. I do believe that we need to do buybacks. We've got to deal with this. How mandatory is your gun buyback program? It's mandatory. Kami Law has talked about this for years. Sometimes it just is the guns. It's just the guns. Sorry, AWOL. It's never just the guns. It's not just the guns that are going and doing gun things. In fact, look at what Proverbs 9 uh, verse 10 has to say. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, when we fear God, fear his power, give him reverence and glory and honor, then that is the beginning of wisdom. There is no true wisdom outside of God, outside of God giving us a wisdom that goes beyond common sense, but a wisdom that truly leads us in all truth. And in fact, in James chapter one, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. You know, in these times that we live in, we desperately need more people that are wise, that are being led in wisdom and in truth. And we can find that type of wisdom to navigate through these times that feel so overwhelming and are so evil and so demonic. We can find wisdom to navigate these times through seeking God and asking him to give us that wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Look at verse six. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7 goes on to explain that person who is tossed to and fro by not having faith. Check it out. It says, For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You know, one thing we can do is also ask God to help us to not be unstable in our ways, to help us to navigate these tumultuous times with peace and love and truth and wisdom and goodness and gladness and joy. And we can ask God to give us wisdom, but let's do it in faith. Let's stand on truth and not be double-minded, not be tossed to and fro. And God will give us a wisdom that will triumph over evil. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know, when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.